already people starting to close the ranks uh, behind the new version of the innovation playbook, a digital version that we are uh, showing for the first time today. It is an initial um, demo version that we really want to give you a glimpse uh, to. As you know, the Innovation Playbook is a tool that was developed to translate the OECD Declaration on Public Sector Innovation into practice. The declaration is a high-level instrument that provides guidance to governments how to steer and to promote innovation. And we really want to bridge the gap that sometimes emerge between good intentions and the actual practices. And the Innovation Playbook was a solution co-created by diverse countries to help us move forward with the declaration by applying it into distinct contexts. My name is Bruno Monteiro and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a policy analyst at the Observatory of Public Sector Innovation. And today, as you will see, we have um, with us uh, very important uh, persons for the creation of the, of the playbook and for its uh, recent development. We have prepared a short presentation just to frame to all of you the journey up until now, the kind of the prehistory for the digital version. So if, if you want, Claire, to start with the presentation. Today uh, with me, I will have Claire Carr. It's the comms leader in the Observatory of Public Sector Innovation. She was absolutely critical to help us building this, this tool and in particular to making making it accessible and visible to all of you. As I was saying, the Declaration on Public Sector Innovation that the OECD steers provides an intentional uh, call to for governments to embrace uh, innovation. Since its creation five years ago, a little bit more than five years ago, 43 countries already adhered to the Declaration, what gives you a sign of the importance that is being attributed to this, to this tool. The declaration, as you know, has five very simple principles, embrace and enhance innovation within the public sector, providing high level sponsorship, encourage and equip equipping all public servants to innovate, ensuring that skills and incentives are in place to enable that all public servants can be on board, cultivate new partnerships and involve different voices. It's really important that we go beyond the walls of the government that we really rely on the wisdom, on the motivation from our ecosystem stakeholders, and that we are very attentive, that everyone can have a say in the way innovation is being created, implemented, and iterated. And that, of course, means that we should be inclusive in the way we do innovation. The fourth principle is about supporting exploration, iteration, and testing. It's about testing before implementing. It's about learning with errors. Doing innovation means taking risks. We can take them into control of environments, using robust methods, learn with that. And finally, the fifth principle, it's about diffusing those lessons and sure, share those practices. There is no way in accordance to the declaration that we can build monopolies of innovation. Innovation by definition is something that is shareable and built in partnership. And we really want to make sure that this fifth, fifth principle is, the, is, is driving us to make um, clear to everyone that we do our experiences, we share them because we also want to learn from others and to improve our activities thanks to, to their contributions. In the next slide, you will see that if you want to apply the, the declaration, you can read it, you can generate um, interesting ideas based on your readings, but you can also rely on the experience accumulated throughout the global community of public sector innovators. And the playbook provides a very simple journey for you to apply those principles. First, trying to frame what is the challenge that you want to solve. As we know, we have plenty of problems. We need to frame them and translate them into the language of challenges as something that we really need to cope with. Then the playbook helps you to take stock of where you stand. Maybe you are doing great improvements in a certain area, but you probably need to improve in another one. 
And of course, the playbook will help you for that specific challenge to concentrate on the areas where you really need to make an improvement. And finally, it's about using that, that collective intelligence of use cases, of tools, of actions that all the co-creators of the playbook have contributed with and to use all that to apply and to adapt and to adjust for your context. So three very simple steps, identify the right challenge. It is really important as you know, take stock of your strong points or also of your weaknesses and try to move forward with that using the actions, tools and cases suggested by the playbook. In the next slide, we will see that we really want to make this tool accessible. That is, you don't need to read any kind of instructions. You really, you can directly jump to the playbook and start applying it. We want the playbook to be actionable. We don't want the playbook to be just a source of archival documentation. We want, really want to make sure that the playbook helps you to move and those that knowledge and, and to convert it into concrete interventions. We want it to be user centric, and one of the things um, that 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 uh, we really cared about was to engage actual users in the co-creation and the co-design of this uh, tool. As you will see, we really want to be sure that we can adapt the tool to the context of use. So we have tried, we have applied the playbook, we have learned during experimentation, and we also want the playbook to build connections. And of course, what we are doing today is exactly that. We are building connections, connections that we hope can go beyond the simple use of the playbook. And that is also that something that you will see in the playbook itself, because some of the cases that we provide in the playbook, they are not exactly OECD cases. They are cases from different countries, some of them you will know better today. We are also connecting the playbook with other existing resources of the Observatory of Public Sector Innovation, like the case study library or the toolkit navigator. So we really want to offer a kind of single point of entry that you can use to navigate a whole galaxy of resources and contact points. In the next slide, you will see very quickly that we have 12 countries engaged in the co-creation of the, the, the playbook. In the next slide, you'll see that those 12 countries were working with us to produce a mock-up. So the very simple mock-up, a Word document, then we improve it in, in the first iteration to build uh, not just a larger base of support, but also to include tools, to include cases, something that the mock-up do not uh, anticipate. It was a suggestion that came from our community. And in the end, we have a final version that was tested. Maybe some of you were already in the World Jamboree session that we have to test it. And that is the, 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 the consolidated version that most of you know already, not just in the English language, but also in other uh, na national language. And uh, some of the cases that we will hear today, uh, some of the persons that we will hear today are about cases of national translations of the playbook. We are not seeing any more the presentation, Claire. I'm not sure if there is some. Together with the playbook, we built the do-it-yourself package. We really want to ensure that you can use the playbook for your needs, for your ambition. And we really do not want to limit the uses that you are doing. So we are providing together with the playbook a package of uh, tools. So besides the playbook, you can see a tutorial video. The tutorial video is a very short introduction about how to use and how to apply the, the playbook in 90 seconds. We have also made available an interactive board. So we anticipate that sometimes you don't want to read the playbook, but you want to apply the playbook together with your team. And you can do that in a digital environment because we have a mural board that you can use, you can reuse, you can apply. We also have an in-person version. So if you are interested in running a good old in-person workshop using the, the, the innovation playbook, just let us know. We will send you all the materials. You can translate them. You can adapt them for your own users. You print and you can run the workshops like our colleague from Sweden, for instance, have done. And finally, we have created a feedback channel where you can really, really let us know how it was to apply the playbook, what you have learned, what are the difficulties that you have experienced, 
what were the limitations that you discovered while doing that. And with that feedback channel um, that really worked for us, we were able to identify some potential areas of improvement. And finally, you can, in the next slide, you can see that you, you, we can go, it's just to demonstrate how you apply it. Some countries have, have been doing interactive digital sessions, others have been applying in-person workshops, others have been translating the, the playbook to their own languages, like our colleagues from Romania, they translated it to Romanian, they will tell you about that in a, in a while. And finally, well, the idea that we really want to make sure today before we jump to the digital version is that there is a long journey before creating this digital version. We were not mesmerized by the technological support. What we really want to highlight in this case is that we, thanks to the collective work that was, has been done by these 12 countries, thanks to the intelligence and the commitment they have shown, we were able to co-create this tool that translated very different realities, as you could imagine. We have the opportunity to try and to apply it and to learn with with, with application of the playbook. And we feel that the moment is, is has, has come where we can move to a, a different direction, explore the creation of a platform that is more interactive, that can enable that we can update it and that can offer you, that is the most important part, all the possibilities of using an interactive um, dynamic uh, platform. And for now, it's everything. So in the next slide, you'll see that we are prepared for today a panel discussion. I'm, I'm very pleased to see with us these four colleagues. They are absolutely critical to explain the shape the format, the contents that the playbook has taken. If 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 I if I may say uh, something, this is I think they are some of the faces. There are other colleagues, of course, but they are some of the faces that are part of the co-authorship of this of this innovation playbook. So we have with us uh, Jonas Gumbel from Vinova in Sweden. Um, Jonas and, and this team were the first um, team to translate the playbook into a different language. Uh, so they translated it to, to Swedish and they have built uh, 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 an in-person workshop material adapting their, their needs. So it's, we found it's a very inspiring example how you can appropriate and hack the, the, the playbook, if I say, if I may say that. Then we have with us also Anka Payusesco and Larissa Balak. Uh, both colleagues from the uh, Innovation Lab from Romania. They have not just translated the, the playbook, they are also using the playbook, uh, I, I, I believe, as a, as a critical tool to move forward in building the emergent community of innovators in, in, in Romania. And last but not least, of course, Orlando Rojas, the director of the Laboratorio de Gobierno, the government lab from Chile, it's an international reference point, as you know, uh, um, about to celebrate 10 years as an innovation lab in, 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 lab in, in, in Chile and leading the, the, and paving the way for many others uh, around the, the globe. So first of all, thank you so much to the four of you to, to, to join us today. It's, it's a true pleasure. And we really want to show to our, our, all our participants that this playbook is the report with a with a human face, with real humans, real public servants, different experiences uh, there. We are prepared to start with a kind of generic uh, question for all of you. I think it's a, it can get, it can be a good starter. Uh, and the question is, if you can tell us um, from your own experience, from the experience of your countries, of course, what is the importance of the OECD Declaration on Public Sector Innovation for your work. Um, we, we have mentioned the, the, that this declaration was the landing mark uh, for public sector innovation in the OECD, but we really want to hear you talking about how, how have you been using it or how it has been important for you in your, in your own countries. Maybe we can go and start with Jonas and then do the, the panel as I have just introduced it. 
Perfect. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the invitation to be part of this panel. And hello to you all from uh, sunny and uh, summer warm uh, Uppsala and Stockholm. Um, well, for us, the fact that the ministry in Sweden has signed the declaration uh, is important to give mandate or legitimacy to the complex work of innovation needed to be done in public sector. So that's that's one thing. Uh, it also goes very well hand in hand with, with the rather new goal that we have for the whole government administration, stating that we should be innovative and cooperating in, in the administration. Uh, so the dec declaration and the playbook gives a potential guiding in how to reach that goal. That's how, how I see it, at least. Uh, however, <laughs> I don't think that the declaration was very known. So one function for the first version of the playbook has been to be able to communicate the messages from the declaration and give a very practical advice on how to apply the principles. So it was kind of a way for us to remarket the importance of innovation in public sector. Uh, so, so it has been very good to use both the declaration and the concrete support in the in the first version of the playbook. Yes, I think. Well, thank you so much, and John, as you mentioned, a couple of very important wor uh, words. Uh, one of them, the legitimacy for innovation. I think it's something that everyone can relate with from governments all over the world. The need to have mandates and to have that kind of legitimacy, and of course the importance of demonstrating value. Sometimes we really need to see what happened, what it really means before we can really support it. Uh, thank you so much. Maybe Anka and Larissa, you can tell us uh, mm -hmm. something about Romania, please. Of course, um, joining the declaration was for Romania something quite new. So there was um, uh, ongoing the um, intention that Romania made to adhere to the OECD, and there was a list of instruments, uh, OECD instruments that needed to be assumed somehow. And there was this declaration, um, and by joining it, we didn't realize exactly what it is about. And then we entered uh, into the discussion with you and uh, all the colleagues from the OECD. And we started to analyze that it is was quite brand new for Romania, and it was really introducing the concept of public sector innovation because for Romania, this concept was quite new. There was the concept of innovation, of innovative activities, but not the innovation for public sector. So it was something quite uh, um, very new and very hard to. Uh, get the attention of the political um, leaders in order to get the mandate. So they say, okay, we will join the declaration. It is something interesting, but uh, you, you, the experts, uh, go there and see what it is about. And then uh, by uh, working together with you and uh, all the other colleagues in uh, uh, creating the, um, the innovation playbook, it helped us uh, understand that it was quite the exact tool that we need to, to disseminate and to put into the concrete words and actions what the declaration is about. Uh, because it was not just for us important, it was important for us to explain it easier to the, uh, to the public sector innovation leaders and also for the public servants and so on and so forth. Uh, sorry, I, uh, I didn't say uh, hello to everyone. I'm so uh, very pleased to be part of the panel. Hello, Jonas, and uh, congratulations for the, uh, the job that we do. And uh, exactly that we are all excited about this, uh, this uh, new field. And uh, the public sector innovation gives us the opportunity to explore, to test, to co-create, and to involve some other actors that for Romanian public administration was something brand new. And we have now the, um, the opportunity to make the awareness about the concept. And it has been quite, been quite interesting because everyone is kind of discovering it. And the innovation playbook is really a great tool. Thank you so much, Anka. Very much appreciated. Again, just I will just I will just predate your words to highlight a couple of points that uh, that seems really, really relevant. Raising awareness, it's important. Sometimes we really need to make sure that everyone has visibility that public sector innovation is really, really critical. And then we also need to ensure that everyone is on board. And uh, having tools 
to ensure that we can enlarge the conversation to have not just the experts, but also all our colleagues from the public administration on board is absolutely fundamental. And for that, accessible, usable tools can be a very good uh, uh, way to start it. So thank you so much for for, for those words. Thank you. Uh, Orlando, and from Chile, what can you tell us? Hi, Bruno, and hi for all the people that's connected right now. It's very early in the morning here, uh, so I expect to be very uh, waking, you know? <laughs> Uh, so, uh, thanks for the invitation. Um, well, Chile, as a member of the OECD, uh, considers um, consider this declaration as a common understanding of public innovation, and as other panelists uh, mentioned before. Uh, this common understanding and in, in also how uh, we should foster it. You know? um, for Chile to have signed this declaration in 2019, is a manifestation of, of the compromise that we have with this agenda. Also, the government lab, um, the program that I work for, uh, has a very aligned focus with the principles established in this uh, declaration. So that gave us like a big support here in Chile, like a technical support and the things that we are saying, <laughs> there are things that are from common sense all over the world. Um, so the, the OECD is, is obviously one of the most recognized organizations worldwide in terms of defining best practices and, and ways to develop as, uh, as Chile sees, sees the, uh, the role of OECD. So we always look forward uh, to OECD recommendations in different areas. And in this case, uh, for public innovation, this declaration um, we think is the answer for that. So we are always looking for the tools, recommendation, and best practice um, that OECD um, can can have for us. You know? So that's the main idea that we see the declaration in our work day by day. Thank you so much, Orlando. Again, the importance of having a common understanding about what public sector innovation is, so we can all move together in the same direction and we can support that all the government is working in a transversal way. And of course, the importance of us keeping a, an alignment with best practices and good practices and inspirational examples are very, very important uh, dimensions that I think you, you made very, in a very, very clear, not just for Chile, but I will say for, for most of our countries that, that applies exactly in the, same, in the same way. Going back to, to Jonas, maybe Jonas, I think you, in this case, you, you play a role as a pioneer because in Sweden, as I mentioned already, you were the first ones to translate it to other language than, 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 than English. You are also the first ones to feel the urge of organizing an in-person session because we have thought we were still in the post-pandemic vibe. Uh, so we have created a mural in digital platform, but you are the first ones that they know we really need to have an in-person session. And my question for you is, if you can share with us what motivated you to do this, to translate it and to organize an in-person session and uh, what, 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 why it was important for you? Yeah, sure. Well, we were a part of the, one of my first tasks actually when I started at Vinova was to join the, the working group on, on the playbook. So we were a part of the prototyping work in Sweden and we tested a prototype uh, on a Swedish target group together with the city of Uppsala. Thank you very much, Uppsala. Uh, and one of the insights was that the material should be in Swedish if we aimed at wide use in the Swedish context. And of course, for diverse working groups in the public sector, uh, which we did, we aimed, <laughs> we aimed wide. So, uh, and another insight was that the material was a bit too extensive maybe uh, many post-its and a bit too many complicated text bits within the different modules of the playbook, at least for the Swedish audience. <laughs> so, so we did the simplification work in parallel to the work with, on the translation. So after the first launch, uh, we also got a couple of wishes from, from users to adapt the material to fit the physical workshop. So we answered that call and made a printable and cut and paste version of the playbook. Um, unfortunately, we can't see how used that version of the playbook is, but we have had since, since at least the first launch of the whole material, uh, some 2000 unique visitors on the main site uh, for the playbook. So, so I, I would really recommend 
prototyping stuff before you roll it up, up uh, out for everyone to use. Uh, that was that was really good. We got good insights, and we could start kind of the implementation work with that, uh, and the dissemination work with that prototyping work. It was super. Thank you, Jonas. I think it's really important. Uh, one one of the things I would like to highlight is that we need to walk the talk, and uh, we keep talking about co-creation, experimentation. Let's start by applying it to the tools we use. And I really think the case from Sweden was really inspirational because I think it made very clear that there was a lot of things still to improve in the playbook. And I think that makes clear that we also need to continue this conversation. And I really think the digital version, in fact, is a translation of all the tests that we have done and all the feedback that we received. Sometimes we get the impression that this kind of feedback is not the most positive, but in fact, we can, we can build the improvements exactly on the frictions that we can identify and i i really i really i really believe that Sweden has contributed to that very very in a very clear way by pointing numerous very tiny details that i think made all the difference when we are applying the the the, the tool and the tool if it is going to be used by public servants and public managers it needs to be fit to the way to their needs and to the way they are using so i think it's a great example thank you so much Jonas, again for all your work, for for hacking the tool as well, uh, maybe maybe I can share a question with uh, with our colleague from Laboratul di Novare, our colleague from the Innovation Lab in 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 in, in Romania. You you apply it the you translated as well the playbook. You apply it. Uh, I will say in the most massive session I ever saw the tool being applied it was a virtual session with I don't know eight hundred people. I it was it was absolutely massive. I was really, really impressive because I think it translates very well what we are saying. We need to go beyond the walls of the innovation lab. We go. We need to go where public servants are. And I, I really, I was really, really impressed with, with, with your example. And my question is, what, what do you plan still to achieve with this tool? What, what do you want really to get out of this tool for your own mission and your own strategy? If I can intervene, um, I think uh, for us uh, with the innovation um, uh, initiative, innovation in public sector initiative, at the very beginning, um, this uh, tool will be very useful to um, be implemented um, along our um, future initiatives, which are the development of a strategy and action plan that are dedicated to the um, to the um, <clears throat> public sector innovation. Um, and it will be basically both the declaration and the playbook will be used to help us structure uh, the objectives of this strategy and the uh, ensuing actions. And um, I think it is also important to say that we are um, in the process of developing a new uh, platform that will be dedicated precisely to uh, interactions uh, between uh, public servants on the innovation uh, of in the public sector. So uh, we are looking forward to integrating this um, this tool, the digital tool <laughs> that uh, you are now creating in the future platform that will, uh, so hopefully this will be, uh, this will enable uh, more and more people to take up uh, innovation in the public sector for us. So. Thank you so much, Larissa. And, uh, and thank you also for reminding us all that the innovation is an never finish a job. So we start by doing a session, we create a network, we create a platform, we need to upgrade the platform, we need to reinvent another thing. Uh, and so it's a never finish a job. And I, 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 I really appreciate that you tell us that this is a kind of cumulative step-by-step -step approach that you are using. It's, I think it's, it's a very interesting case going from the initial stage where that Anka told us, where people were still trying to understand exactly what is public sector innovation to a point where we are already creating a platform to connect people that are already doing it. So I think it's it's a very interesting example. And uh, Orlando, as, as I was saying in the beginning, El Laboratorio de Gobierno and the innovation, the, the government lab in, in Chile, it's about to make 10 years. 10 years in lab years is like 100 years, I will say, it's yeah. converting <laughs> a, in a lot more. So my, my question for you is that, well, if if we see that the, your history and the history of the of the declaration are and they run in parallel, I think you made the point in the first in the, in the first mm. So, uh, how, 
how, how, how have you used the, the declaration on the ground uh, for, for explaining <clears throat> also if, uh, the, the 10 years that you are about to achieve? Yes, so, so as I mentioned before, thanks everyone, this declaration has been a guideline to the different services that the government lab does. Um, it support it support us. You know? uh, first of all, we have this agile uh, consultancy service, um, a service that co creates solutions with the public institution to their main challenges, based primarily on exploration, iteration, and testing. You know, uh, as one of the principles that the declaration stands for. Um, in addition, we are encouraged to incorporate uh, in every project to cultivate new partnerships and involve different voices. Also, another principle that we look forward all, always to see. In terms of culture um, of public servants, we have um, a public innovators network. Uh, right now, with more than 28,000 uh, members from all different sectors in Chile, civil society, academia, private sector, and of, and of course, um, public sector. So in, in this network, we, we build uh, capabilities of falling innovation to the people, uh, encouraging them to innovate and providing the tools to do it, uh, very aligned with this declaration. We also have a deep focus on skills development, and actually, Two weeks ago, we, we, ha we have launched a public um, innovation school that is a virtual open space with more than 50 structures, video of different topics uh, to innovate. And it has a flexible structure to everyone to trace their own innovation route of courses. Uh, very aligned with one of the principles that the declaration stands for. And, and finally, uh, we put a lot of efforts in something that you mentioned, that it was a uh, diffusing lessons uh, and shared practices. Uh, not only uh, in our public innovators network, but also in our public innovation index. Uh, that is a measurement um, of public service capabilities of innovation, where we get insights about their maturity level and also uh, we give them tools to fill the gaps they have in terms of innovation. So in general, uh, the OECD Declaration of Public Sector Innovation has been a clear model of principles uh, that has helped, helped us um, to have a common understanding, as I mentioned before, uh, with the very different developing countries of how can we work. And so we try with every service that we have to incorporate those uh, those principles in order to have a very uh, like comprehensive strategy of innovation. We we see this tool as a as a that, that kind of tool that give us a very comprehensive way to to work with the with the services. Not only focus on project management, skill development, but all principles um, as an integrated a uh, way of of fostering innovation. Thank you so much, Orlando. I think it's a very good point to explain how the declaration is important. It offers an integrated vision of innovation. It's not about doing project. It's not just about doing skill. Not just about doing having sponsorship. It's about having this holistic vision of of innovation. It's very very good point. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for for telling us more about that. So just just before we close our panel, we thought about opening up the space for you uh, to share some questions. We have been collecting some interesting questions up until now, but you are also invited to um, let us know if you have any question specifically to Anka, Larissa, Orlando, or Jonas. Let us know if you have any 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 question. Uh, I'm pretty sure that our colleagues are um, more than glad to share uh, their thoughts with you. And just to give you some time, uh, I will I will just grab the question from Niklas uh, that I imagine came from Sweden as well. It's about the 60, 70 successful innovation projects in, in the scope of, uh, of the public innovation between municipality and startup they are running. And uh, the question from Nicholas is if we are having to narrow in the playbook just for internal innovation projects. And the answer is, is no. Indeed, we are not doing uh, just for this for internal projects. It, it was, I will say, the starting point 
because most of us came from, as you see, consolidated teams, and they were looking as a way to translate the declaration into projects. But pretty, pretty soon we discovered that for other colleagues, what was really, really relevant was to discuss the state of innovation in their organization. So for instance, we have a player and we have run sessions that engage at different departments and different teams of the same organization. And one of the interesting things that the playbook created was to show that first, there was no not the same understanding of innovation across departments of the same organization. Second, the playbook enable a structured conversation. Sometimes you just need to create a space where people can be in a very focused way, work on common challenges, take stock of their capacities and move forward together. Just doing that is in itself a very good starting point. And more surprisingly for us was that we also see some people applying the playbook for the dialogue between countries. So for instance, in some of the regional programs, we are discovering that countries as different as Azerbaijan, Georgia, Moldova, Ukraine, were using this tool to start a conversation about, the, of course, the barriers, but also the opportunities that exist for cross-border collaboration around uh, public sector innovation. Very different situations, very different constraints, very different goals, for sure. But if we can work together to identify, raise shared challenges, take stock of the resources, but also of, I will say, the weaknesses that we have, and again, collaboratively define a way ahead of us to move and to collaborate between us, that is in itself very productive. So we have seen, Nicholas, the playbook being applied for internal project teams, organizations, different organizations of the same country, but also dialogues between, between, between countries. And now we have already some questions for our uh, participants. I will um, share with you uh, uh, some of those questions. One of them is a very good question. It's a question for Orlando to tell us more a little bit about the Public Innovation Index. I think it's something uh, that ev everyone around this 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 this, this table um, would like to to hear more. Then we have a, a question from Jerome. Um, that that is about what what have we learned about co-creating and working with other countries and i believe that both larissa anka and jonas you can tell us something about that because you were part of the group that co-created uh that so i will stop here and i will wait for for new questions if we have the time so maybe orlando and then anka larissa and jonas thanks nice question <laughs> Uh, well, the, the Public Innovation Index is a tool that uh, we created in, in 20, uh, 2019 uh, with the Inter American Development Bank in Chile, um, in which aims to measure the capabilities of public services, uh, mainly in Chile, the um, this, this, the central government services. Uh, we started with the central government services. Uh, we are now measuring 50 services. Uh, we created a framework with 10 capabilities that go from structure, um, legal framework, um, like um, skills, uh, digital um, capabilities and more important um, capabilities um, around openness to the people, openness um, to users, to other institutions, uh, and to um, different sectors, and also that they have they they should have processes, established processes to innovate, and established procedures. If you have an uh, innovation, uh, you have to to pass to through the different uh, stages of innovation. Not only pass to from idea to implementation, but obviously, as you may know, uh, passing through experimentation and in, in, in feedback from the from the user, and you have to 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 have the, the necessary evidence of that. Uh, and so that uh, measurement. Um, we collect the data and 
and we and, and we audit it. So it's um a, it's a very evidence based uh, measurement, and also uh, we have a, a program of development of uh, capabilities after we have the measurement every year. Uh, so we organize the results in different levels of a uh, maturity of the um, of the capacities of the institutions and depending on what level of maturement they have uh, we apply different tools um, to 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 strengthen their capabilities we have a uh, di different tools this a uh, public uh, innovation school that this virtual space that i mentioned before uh, started last, as a space within this uh, public innovation index uh, in the development capabilities area. Uh, and then, and also we have a, a mentoring network uh, from people of different uh, parts of civil society, academia, and, and, ex and former authorities uh, that can help the uh, institution in order to strengthen their capabilities. And finally, uh, uh, in order to be concise, uh, we are working right now uh, with different countries here in Latin America in order to, to extend this index in the region. We are working right now with Peru, with Colombia, Uruguay, um, hopefully with Costa Rica, uh, Dominican Republic, Brazil, uh, to have a common index. Uh, so there in Europe, uh, we know that there's a lot of effort that you have carried out right now but we are in the same line we have we, we want to have this this um very standardized way to measure all all governments in order to to advance in a in, in a more integrative way you know so i, I guess that's <laughs> very good saying uh, description no thank you so much Orlando. i think uh, people will really appreciate the fact that Indeed, it is possible, of course, to foster innovation, but also it's also in, important to keep track on how innovation is is, is going. So I, I think uh, all those tools are really, really relevant. So thank you so much. It was it was a question that we have specifically for you. Maybe Larissa Anka and uh, Jonas, you can tell us more exactly what was the, what were the learning points of the co-creation uh, process. Uh, from our point of view, and from my point of view, it was quite. Uh... Um, I was I was feeling quite quite comfortable to see that uh, we have all experiences sometimes the same challenges because I was uh, first very shy and um, wasn't about to show that uh, we are not so advanced in this field and uh, but uh, it was quite very helpful and uh, extremely useful for us to see that everyone was cons for confronting the same challenges as we are. And that the public sector innovation in Romania was not that far from what we thought it was in uh, other countries. We learned from the most initiated, we, we learned from them, but also what was more important was um, that the co-creation of the, uh, of the uh, playbook was an, um, an experiment itself because it uh, revealed to us that we um, have the determination to disseminate it and to uh, uh, become resilient to those who don't understand because it can help us to explain and to share best practices and by giving the examples from the innovation playbook to the others uh, lead us to to uh, make the, the the awareness that the innovation is happening and we cannot be uh, out of it it will be over us somehow but uh, it was very helpful because <laughs> somehow and uh, not only Romania was struggling and uh, we become more resilient to tell them about by showing the concrete examples. So it was very useful showing the practices from other countries. Uh, and now we can also say that we have an, uh, 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 an internal best practice in this field because there are so many people interested in the subject now. We are so very alone at first, but now we are so many. So thanks to the, the playbook and the experiences from uh, working with other countries. And we copied that uh, methodology and experimenting and using and co-creating the playbook in doing other things in uh, our, uh, our activities, innovative activities at home. Yeah. 
all all heard already people saying that uh, innovation is about uh, avoiding to reinvent the wheel. So I think uh, if it works and we can make it work also in our country, why not? I I, I was I will strongly invite people to 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 do the same. It's a very inspirational talk. Thank you, uh, Jonas. Uh, if you want to share some less thoughts with us about the I have uh, almost the same point as Anka that it's it's uh, it, we are more alike than we might think. At least in Sweden, we tend to look at our problems as unique, and it's hard to get scaling and and spreading innovation in 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 our country in general. But working with, I mean, when we met in in the Opti Network uh, a couple of weeks ago, we were 25 countries, and and if you have that horizon, it's fantastic to learn from everyone. And and almost all countries, at least, uh, said that capability, capacity building when it came to innovation was super important. And so it's very smart then to, to kind of cooperate around this, not creating, as you say, Bruno, the wheel several times. So, so and I can really recommend if you have the chance to be a part of this kind of group, it's, it's fantastic. We have had uh, people from all the continents in the same digital room at the same time. So it's super fun also. Thank you so much, Jonas. Thank you so much, Orlando. Thank you so much, Anka and Larissa. We really, really appreciate your first-hand uh, experiences. Uh, we, we, I also want to stress that this is not the end of the conversation. We really hope this to be, as I mentioned in the beginning, an opportunity for us to connect and to keep the conversation going on. Also search for other kinds of synergies besides talk. We can do projects together. So we are. I'm pretty sure that our colleagues are more than willing to hear your questions, your suggestions. So I will kindly invite all of you to let us know. You can use the email that my colleague Claire Carl is sharing with you uh, to reach out directly. You can also visit the OPSI website, register for the newsletter just to keep uh, track of what we are doing. And I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that you can uh, let us know all, you, all, all your ideas, all your questions. We, we will do the best to, to answer them. And on that regard, we have received some questions that we were not able to answer due to time limitations, but we will come back to you and we'll try to answer them by writing. We have done that before. It worked, it worked well. We, this can also be a good way for us to, uh, again, start or restart or continue a conversation. So you are uh, invited, again, to subscribe to the newsletter, to contact us, and we, we will do our best to keep, to keep track. So again, thank you so much, Orlando, and Larissa, and, uh, and Jonas. I'm pretty sure that uh, our colleagues uh, out there also appreciated this. So before leaving, we really want to give you a glimpse, a first touch on the new digital version of the Innovation Playbook. Maybe Claire can share with us uh, a part of the presentation just to uh, mention a couple of things that were really, really important in our uh, working group. One of them was all these experiences that we have been accumulating. So we were being applying the playbook. We saw the results, the positive results, of course, but we also identified there was a lot of things that we can do better. And the, 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 the conversation in the working group was precisely about how can we really um, use these experiences to build a new horizon of ambitions. So we cannot let the playbook to get fossilized. So we really don't want to create a fossil. So we really want to keep it a living creature. And for, for that, we, we, we got uh, comments that asked us to build an engaging, playful, interactive version. We really want, we really heard people saying that we really need to highlight uh, the importance of cross linkages. So there are so many things already available. Let's make everything accessible in a single point. Let's make linkages. Again, people were translating it. People were making changes to the playbook. So we really need to make it updatable and manageable. Otherwise, each time we need to produce a new PDF version, it will take a lot of time and a lot of resources. We really need to streamline this uh, process. Then again, it should be accessible and usable for all users, independently of the location, for instance. If you have a problem, you can have any time, any moment, access to that, to that version. And Another thing that people keep saying us is that we need a way to produce in a very automatic fashion, if I may, the results of the interaction with the playbook systematized and exportable. And for all these reasons, as you can see in the next slide, 
we ask a people from the working group, if they want to support us in exploring a new version. And pretty soon people converged that building an interactive, updatable digital version was the way to go. So we have colleagues from Belgium, from Brazil, from Chile, Colombia, Luxembourg, Spain, and Sweden that joined us specifically to hear this new version. So we started to identify what are the most important uh, features. We started, we pre-tested what are the, what, what is the structure, what is the, the, the journey that we should go. And after all these interactions, we got the opportunity of building a demo version that I will uh, share with, with you uh, right now, if I may. Mm -mm. I'm not sure if I can share it. Uh, Claire, do you have the, the, the way to share it? I'm I'm struggling here to share my screen. Um, you should be able to share with the button at the bottom. I've also made you host now. I hope you can see it. It was not working. Okay. I think I think you now you can see it. No, we are not seeing it. Not yet. No. Can you can you see it now? Yeah. Now it's now we're seeing it. Great. Finally. So thank you so much for for this uh, for the, for your patience. So this will be the starting point for your journey in the digital uh, version. We want to keep consistency in visual terms. So you can click uh, to begin your journey and then you will be conducted to um, initial presentation of the journey map. So the journey stays exactly the same. What are the challenges? Where do you stand right now? How can you improve? the situation. So you will be steered by this digital version in doing this journey in, I will say, a very interactive uh, way. You can continue the journey, of course. And then the first screen will ask you what is the big picture problem that you have. You, you can use your own words to describe it. It's important sometimes to put it in words because we are doing this in, with a team of people. We are not necessarily applying this individually. So having a kind of initial statement put together, it's already a, an improvement. You can, of course, register your um, country, your organization there. Just an example. OK, that's the example that we bring from Optim. And then you will be conducted to a place where you can choose based on your initial problem, what are the challenges, the specific innovation challenges that are related with that challenge. You can select as many as you want. Uh, and you can let us know if you detect something that needs to be improved. Imagine that you are clicking on these challenges and you do not find exactly the specific challenge that you have. If you want to make a suggestion, you just need to use the Give Feedback button. The Give Feedback button is always there for you to make suggestions, to, to make comments, to correct things that you find are not really okay for you. And after that, after you select all the challenges, you will be moved to the next slide. And then the, the next page groups, clusters, the challenges under the principles. So you can see what is the principle that best applies to each of your challenges. For instance, if you have, as you have in this case, four challenges, the two, the four, the eight, and the 16, you will see that these challenges fit under principle two. You will see that on all other challenges fit under the other different principles. And you will give you the chance of selecting what is the principle that you want to apply. So you have a certain number of challenges that describe your problem. And you can use the, the principle of the declaration as a kind of superpower that you will apply to solve the ch those challenges. So if you select it, you will know more about that principle. You will know that the Declaration on Public Sector Innovation provides guidance and provides steering for those uh, principles, for those challenges. And then you will take stock of your current situation. For, for each different challenge, we have produced the list of topics where you can take stock of. 
you can let us know, for instance, if you, your, you have a portfolio approach in your country. This is something that is a great success or this is something that needs improvement. Or maybe there's something in between. Are you already sharing the learnings of your innovation initiatives? Maybe it's a success. Maybe it's it needs improvement. Maybe it stays in between. You will be invited to make an assessment of your current situation to deal with the challenge that you have highlighted. After doing that, you will do that as you wish. You can move forward. And based on that, what you will see is that you have areas that need to be dealt immediately because are the most critical areas. That are the areas that you are really struggling with. Other areas, you are probably doing well. And maybe you can prioritize the ones where you have a condition that is more delicate. And then you can choose one of those areas to improve. You can choose any area, of course. You can choose an area that is doing more or less well, but you can go and choose an area that is in a very critical situation. For instance, in this case, the portfolios of innovation. And for the portfolios of innovation, we will suggest you to use specific actions that were nice in other countries or that were good learn that produced good learnings in other countries. And for each of these action that the playbook suggests, you will let us know, this is something that has a lot of impact or do you anticipate that don't have any kind of impact in your country because different contexts have different impacts. And you will let us also know if this is something easy to do or something very complex to do in your country. And based on that assessment, on the way each of these suggested actions applies or not applies to your country, we will produce a summary report. And you will see that you have all your challenges described. You will see that you have all your situation characterized for those challenges from red to green. That means from areas that need improvement to areas where you are, you are doing already very well. And you have all the actions suggested in a way that translate the impact and the complexity of each of them. So you have some of the actions that will be quick wins. That means actions that are easy to do and have a lot of impact. You will also have actions that are strategic effort. That means actions that have a lot of impact, of potential impact, but that are also very complex. So based on your interactions with the playbook, you will be able not just to take stock of your situation, but also to define the base for a kind of roadmap to solve your initial challenges. And based on this, you can download the results as a PDF. You can, of course, send your feedback about how the session was. And we can use this opportunity to start a meaningful conversation again. The innovation playbook is not a magical potion, so you are not taking it and solve all your problems, but it could be a good way for you to start approaching in an integrated way innovation in your organization, to take a clear view on your challenges, take stock of your current situation, and start defining a roadmap to solve your challenges. This was just the demo version, a very static version that we have, but we really believe that uh, the next iteration will be a much more interactive also uh, and dynamic uh, view. Just before finishing, and that's the whole point, even if we are already on, on top of, the, of, the, of um, the limit of our time, is that we have prepared a very short uh, couple of questions for you to let us know what you think of um, the playbook, because we really want to use your feedback to produce the definitive version. So my, my colleague Claire Carr can share this, the screen or can share the link in the chat. You can go to WhoClap. It's very simple. You can go to WhoClap and use this event code. If you, if you have your mobile phone in your hand, like I have, you can use this QR code. And using the QR code, you'll be directed to a specific page. We are just giving you a couple of um, seconds to get there. And after doing this, maybe we can move to the first of the two questions that we have. What was your first impression? 
in one word, let us know what you feel, what you think uh, when you saw the playbook, even in this static, still rough version that we want to share with you because we really want to get your opinion to improve and to create a definitive version. Let us know because your words, your emotions, your feelings regarding the playbook, that kind of three second rule that we, we use will be very important for us. As soon as you insert your answer, you just need to submit it. We probably need to update, uh, to refresh the, the browser a couple of times. The question is, uh, what, what, what is, what have you felt when you saw the journey of? When you saw the 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 aspect of the of the of the digital uh, version. Apologies, I'm just putting it back up again. One minute. Okay. There we have it. One minute, sharing right now. Thank you. And as you can see, we have a word cloud. Promising, interesting, simple, fascinated, dynamic, impressive. So we have some words. We have also very good uh, inputs about uh, the coolness of the tool, the, the pathway to improve, the potential that probably can be still improved as well. So um, Thank you so much for, 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 for this. It's really, 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 really helpful. Thank you. So it's the first impression. We, we promise that we will take seriously what you are saying and uh, build on top of your suggestions, the definitive version. And then going to the second question, if for you to let us know in a scale from one to five, where one is totally unclear and five is totally clear, if you, have understood the journey. We kept mentioning that that was a simple journey in three steps, but we uh, we really want to hear that from you. It, it is simple. If it is simple, you can use five. If it is totally clear, if it is totally unclear, you can let us know by choosing one or some number in between. For us, that will be important because we have that assumption that it is a three step, easy to understand journey but we really want to hear that from you. Great, thank you. Thank you so much for, for this. And thank you so much for staying with us a couple of minutes more. We really appreciate this occasion so we can integrate your suggestions and we can really, really use the feedback to make it better. Thank you so much. Thank you, well, first of all, thank you so much for, for, for your uh, inputs. And thank you. Well, the OOC lab will stay open for a couple of uh, hours more. So if you really want to, to 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 keep your your comments your suggestions you are you are much you are very much welcome and now because i am very aware of of, of the time we are taking um so maybe we can close the interactive session for now thank you so much for this we really appreciate the opportunity that you gave us to sh give a, a first glimpse we we promise the first uh, kind of soft launch of the of the of the new version we really want to do this even we if we were aware that this is not the definitive uh, version for sure we really want to have this occasion where we can ex again expand the, the 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 frontiers of the people that is engaged 
in using and applying the playbook and most importantly, integrating your suggestions, your critiques, your comments in the way we are developing the next iteration. Once again, thank you so much for all of you for taking the time and joining us. Thank you especially for the extra eight minutes that we took in this session. Very much appreciated for that. I know that um, time is, 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 is something really, really critical for all of us. So thank you again. And a very special um, thank you for uh, Anka, Larissa, Orlando, and Jonas, not just for being us with us today, but for all the time they spent with us in the last many months, and hopefully for the many months they will stay with us in the future. Thank you again for all of you, and uh, thank you for all the panelists in particular. Thank you, and uh, see you soon. Keep Stay thank tuned with much. us. Send our questions, subscribe to the newsletter, let us know what you think using the email. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye, -bye. bye to all. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye.